Hi there and welcome back. So in this video what we are going to cover is something so common, so popular that all of us are already aware of. Whenever we go and see our doctor, we always ask about these details. Am I diabetic? Right. So let's take a look at the pancreas. Let me start other way around. So we are now familiar with pancreas, we started from pituitary gland, pineal gland, hypothalamus, thyroid, parathyroid. We skipped thymus because we have covered in different presentation series, we are at the pancreas. When we look at all these, the major contributors or the glands as it comes to the endocrine system, thyroid is the largest one. Although one can say pancreas, but because pancreas does both the exocrine and endocrine. So traditionally speaking, uh, thyroid is the largest one because pancreas does other things that we have reviewed in a different presentation series on digestive system. And it does exocrine as well as endocrine, both functions. And hence, um, number one comes size-wise number come number one comes to thyroid this is the best way to explain this subject i don't know about you guys you may like fries or burger but i am a fruit person i need 365 days fruits is my breakfast no matter what we eat it goes into through the digestion in the digestive system and the process once all said and done, there is a spike in the uh, glucose in our blood. So what happens, pancreas is telling to release the insulin into the blood. So that it can, remember the homeostasis, it can bring the uh, glucose level in the blood down to a normal plus it can move that to the liver where it can be stored and can be released on as needed basis to maintain the homeostasis okay so that's what insulin does when there is a too much sugar in the blood insulin is released by the pancreas and as a result it brings the uh, glucose or the sugar level in the blood to a back to normal like a thermostat that we started in the first video and it converts that extra glucose or the extra sugar into the storage into the liver called glycogen pancreas let's go back and now we'll come back here so we can connect few dots here so when we say pancreas, pancreas, there are islets of Langerhorns. Uh, those are the, the cells that does two, when we focus on the endocrine system, there are two things. One is insulin and one is glucagon. Those are the two hormones released by the pancreas. Insulin does what? It brings, when it is released, so that the sugar in the blood goes down and brings back to normal. Glucagon does other way around. When there is a less sugar in the blood, it breaks down the storage of glycogen that we have in the liver to be released to the blood in the circulation to bring back the homeostasis. Okay. So from endocrine system standpoint of view, pancreas does insulin and glucagon. These are the two hormones released by the pancreas. Now there are names given for these hormones. Um, you will see in a minute. Let me just make sure on their other details. So the one that I was referring to, glucose turns into the glycogen, like a storage in the liver, right? And what insulin does 
and what glucagon does, they are opposite twin. Just like in homeostasis, you have a hypo versus hyper, underactive versus overactive. Level of sugar or glucose in the blood, period. So, for the glucagon, the name is alpha cells and it ranges from 10 to 30 percent. And for the insulin, it is called beta cells, it ranges from 60 to 90 percent. As far as what hormones are released and the percentage that pancreas does in reference to endocrine. And of course, we stated before in one of the prior video that pancreas does both and uh, it releases various enzymes and juices and all that. When we reviewed the digestive system, we did touch base on those. So, that is there. Uh, now all of you are familiar with this from pineal gland to pituitary hypothalamus, thyroid, parathyroid pancreas, adrenal we already covered. This is another way to put in perspective the same thing that we reviewed before, whether you have a low blood sugar or whether you have a high blood sugar, what happens, high blood sugar, insulin, glucagon, when insulin is released, when glucagon is released and why. So that's the cycle. And the same thing is stated here that we started at one point. So when we eat, there is a high level of uh, glucose or sugar in the blood and hence pancreas releases the insulin to bring the um, glucose back to normal and or in the process the excess gets stored, stored into the way of uh, a glycogen in the liver, right? And when there is a less glucose, less sugar in the blood, glucagon, the opposite of insulin, is releasing the stored form of starch or the energy or the glucose or the sugar back into the blood. Make sense? And I found this one, this is also another awesome way to look at the how they are the opposite twins. Hormones secreted by beta, alpha, uh, if you are more curious, there are molecular structure out there, uh, pro-insulin versus pro-glucagon. When insulin is triggered, when there is a high blood sugar level, right? As opposed to the glucagon, when there is a low blood sugar level, right? What ultimately the effect is, it insulin decreases the blood levels of glucose and fatty acids. And other way around happens in glucagon. Diabetes 1 and 2 cause abnormally low insulin or no response to the insulin. Alpha cell tumor of the pancreas and cirrhosis of liver can cause abnormally high levels of glucagon. Nice presentation of our comparison. So, I don't think we need to go further because now we know the homeostasis, what is hyper, what is hypo, what is overactive, what is underactive. So think logically what happens when there is too much insulin in the blood or there is no insulin in the blood and that's where comes the hyperinsulinism which means too much insulin in the uh, blood as a result it leads to hypoglycemia why because more insulin goes out into the blood it takes away the the sugar or the glucose and as a result hypoglycemia occurs it can happen and why that happens? It can happen because of some sort of tumor, maybe benign, maybe cancerous in the pancreas or because of the malfunction, the overdose of insulin 
naturally released and or due to some medical conditions like a tumor. And of course, as a result, hypoglycemia occurs. And needless to say that fainting and convulsion and uh, loss of consciousness are common because we have to have a minimum level of blood sugar, right? It goes without saying. And hyposecretion is the other way around. When, and that's why we talk about diabetes. That's why we talk about type 1 and type 2 or insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent. And it has to do with, and uh, I think these are all the details we all know, but just to quickly go through that. So hyposecretion is diabetes when there is a lack of insulin. Person's body or the pancreas is not producing enough insulin. That causes diabetes, right? Because there is no insulin, so more sugar remains in the blood. And hence, doctor has to either administer insulin injections and or depending upon how good or how bad and looking at the overall medical profile, maybe uh, watch your food intake, uh, exercise, of course, family history plays a role and if needed, medications and all that. So, uh, type 1 is typically as we know that it happens in the childhood and early stage in our life and what happens there is there is a uh, destruction of the beta cells or the insulin so to speak and uh, type 2 or the non-insulin dependent happens typically later age uh, adult onset and there are various variations I am not going to capture all the variety of impaired glucose tolerance or um, uh, gestational diabetes so those are very common so but the fundamental is about hyper and hypo anti homeostasis okay and treatment we understand primary com complications are ketoacidosis and I'm sure you all are aware of it. So the fats are improperly burned, leading to an accumulation of ketones, are like chemicals in the body. And coma, when blood sugar concentration gets too high, or the patient receives insufficient amount of insulin. Makes sense, right? So in the secondary complications, can we can go from top to bottom. Um, there, it can be. Uh, you, one may have a diabetic uh, neuropathy, retinopathy, I'm just going from top to bottom. So neuropathy, retinopathy, uh, atherosclerosis, nephropathy, you name it. Anything and everything is possible. Diabetes is like a slow poison. Okay. So that's very common and no need to elaborate further. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back soon. Take care. Bye-bye.